Hi there and welcome to part B of the organic chemistry practical experiment 1.1 solution. So um, for this one here, I was going to answer the last question. But before that, let me make a correction. In the part A, in the part A, there was a mistake for question 2B. Question 2B said write an equation for the reaction of permanganate with cyclopentene. Name the product. So there was a mistake for the solution of this in the part A. So I'll just do the correction before we start today's work. All right, let's do the B part. So B there, we're asked to get um, an equation for the reaction of permanganate with cyclopentene. All right, but I think we use cyclohexane instead. So let's correct that. So first things first, cyclopentene. I should have this for cyclopentene. Um, this is question B2, actually. Okay. So, question B2 cyclopentene. For cyclopentene, we have this. Uh, so, we have this. Also, have. Okay. Let's cover this up. Okay. So, have this. Alright, so what I have here is now a cyclopentene. Combine this with a permanganate. Alright, so if I combine these two, what I'll get is this. All right, so I'll now have this and then this. Okay, so this was the only thing there. So aside this, everything, everything was correct. That means what should be here is K M N O four. What should be here is cyclopentene. So this should be the correct. Um, symbol for all right so what i have here is cyclo pentene all right so here's a correct chemical um or here's a correct structural form formula for cyclopentene of course what i have here as usual is potassium Potassium permanganate, potassium permanganate, okay, and what I have here is cyclopenta 1 to diol. So this compound here is cyclopenta 1 to diol. All right, so this is the correction for question 2b okay so for question 2b this is this is the correct answer right so you can correct that all right so we missed out this this one here we missed out these two structures so it should have been a cyclopentene this is your correct structure not what we had in part a all right so having corrected this let's now go to today's class all right so having corrected this let's now go to today's class all right so back to this Let's look at A1. Now, in the experiment, you are given sample A, sample B, sample C, and sample D to test, where one of them is an alkene, one of them is an alkene, one of them is an alkyne, and the other is an aromatic, probably benzene. Okay. Now, I will not be using the exact alphabet so that in case of the next set, because they always swap up the samples. So for this A, sample A could be an aromatic. Next year, sample A becomes probably um, an alkene or maybe an alkyne. So they swap it every year. So for that, I'll be using my own samples. I'll be calling my samples sample P, sample Q, sample R, and sample S. So I'll call it this way. So all you have to do is just compare this with your results. And from there, you can get your answer. All right. So just follow me closely. All right. 
Number one says, which of the four samples reacted with bromine solution? Now, in this part here, if you did your experiment correctly, you should have that two samples will react with bromine solution, two of them. Now, for me now, from, for this one here, let me call this A1. This was question A1. So, A1, let me just, let's, let's just assume that the two samples in this case are Q and R, all right? So, I would say sample Q and sample R. Okay, so I would say Q and R. So, I'll just say sample Q. Sample Q and sample R. So, whatever to you, whatever two um, samples you had there, just note your answers. That's the first thing there. Now, two says which of the samples had had a sweet aroma. Now, for this, this is question A two. All right, for A two, um, A two. All right. Let's call the one that have a sweet aroma, sample S, right? If your work is actually correct, this is to say that none of the above, that's none of either P or R, or R will still appear here. P or R will not have a, a sweet aroma, all right? So let's assume that another sample now had a sweet aroma. We're calling it sample S. So I'm saying that in this case here, these three will be different. Please take note, all right? This A2 cannot be Q or R. It will not be. Alright, so if you're on track, that way you have three different samples here. Let's proceed. Okay. A3 says, of the samples that did not react, which do you think is aromatic? Give your reasons. Now, don't, don't forget that the ones that reacted were sample Q and R. The ones that did not react were what there? P and S. Alright, if you check this, the ones that reacted with bromine were Q and R. So the one that... Q and R reacted. The ones that did not react were P and S. And then they're asking you, out of P and S, which of them do you think is an aromatic? The, the idea is simple. That the idea is this: anyone that has a sweet smell is aromatic. And in this one here, we are saying that A2 was sample S, which again further confirms that the initial saying that this one will be different from these two was correct. That means in A3, okay, so this is A3, that means for A3, whatever sample you had as sample A2, this same thing comes under A3. So that means this is now repeated here. So this is sample S. So please note this thing. All right, that, that means A2 and A3 will have exactly the same answer and it will be different from A1. So you can see this. All right, let's proceed. Number four, write an equation. I think we've done this in part A. So you can check out the solution in part A. Let's move to the next question. Next one says, write an equation for the reaction of phenyl ethane with bromine. We've done this in part A. So you can check it up. BI says, which of the samples reacted with potassium permanganate? All right. That's B1. Which of the samples reacted with potassium permanganate? Let's call this B1. So for B1, what will be your answer? Now note that the same answers you had in this A1, the same answers you had in A1 here will be the same answer as you have in B1. Just note it that way. I will explain why much more later. Okay. All right. So that means B1 will be the same answer. So if that's true, that means sample B um, B1 will be sample sample Q and R. So we have this. All right. So this is the answer for sample B1. Let's move over to B2. B2. Write an equation. Okay, we've done this already in the A part, which I just corrected. Three, write an equation for the reaction of permanganate with ethane. We've done three, two. Also number four, we've done number four. C1 says, which of the samples give a precipitate with cuprous chloride solution, right? Which of the um, samples give a precipitate with cuprous chloride solution? Now, one of, this, one of the samples here for C1, let me get C1 here. So for C1, the answer to C1 will be either Q or R, all right? Of these two you mentioned, one of them will be the one that gives um, a precipitate with cuprous chloride. So let's say sample 
R is my answer. All right, let's say sample R gives um, a precipitate. So please observe how this thing works. That means one of these answers here in B1, one of them will be C1. Okay. Okay. Um, what's next there? Write an equation for the reaction of. Okay. Okay. So we've done this. Um, even this. Okay. So I think that's basically everything. So the, the final tax there, sample D. From your answers to the equation above, indicates hydrocarbon classes of A, B, C, and D. Give reasons. Now, that's simple enough. Now, I'll be using my own as a, for, for instance. I will start with the first one there. Uh, let me take sample S first. I'll take sample S because that's the easiest to note. Why is sample S the easiest to note? Well, that's simple. If you go back to the first thing we did, So for the first thing we did, we said sample S give us what there? A sweet aroma. So that should be like the easiest to note. The one that gives a sweet aroma is called the aromatic, which in your case should be benzene. So hence, um, sample S. So whatever you got here, whether it was A, B, C, or D, this one here is your aromatic. For me, I'm calling mine S. So sample S is benzene or an aromatic. So I'm going write sample S is is benzene in bracket aromatic they said we should give reason now because let's give the reason why answer is simple because it gives a sweet smell or gives a sweet aroma because it gives a Sweet aroma. So that's it. All right. So the first one is check. So sample S is check. Um, don't forget our samples were P, Q, R, and S. So sample S is gone. Um, this one is off. So we're left with P, Q, and R. Now the next one we'll do is this. Um, if you look at there, there was one of them that gave us just sample R as an answer, which was C one. C1, C1 said, um, which of the samples gives a precipitate with cuprous chloride solution? Now, something to notice this, the only um, homologous series out of the alkane, 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 and, the only homologous series out of the alkane, alkane, alkyne, and aromatic that reacts with cuprous chloride is the alkyne. All right. So since sample R reacted, that means sample R is an alkyne. So don't forget, only the alkynes. Let me write that down. Only the alkynes. That's this reacts with cuprous chloride. All right. That means sample R is an alkyne. So I would come here. I would write sample R. Is an alkyne why do i say it's an alkyne well simple because it reacts with cuprous chloride so because it reacts with cuprous chloride so please take note only alkynes react with cuprous chloride now if this one is checked that means we can now easily get the value of q now going back to the first question now from the first question it says which of the four samples reacted with bromine solution now what to note is this only the alkene only alkene and our kinds react with bromine all right they react with bromine by decolorizing bromine now if that's true compared with the answer we said our answer was a and r but we've, we've already established that r is what there an alkyne so if r is an alkyne that's our kinds already taken we are left with the concept that q has to be what there alkene since only alkene and alkyne react with bromine if R, if you've discovered that R is an alkyne because it reacts with cuprous chloride, then we are only left with the concept that Q is what there, an alkene. 
So hence, we can say Q is an alkene. Why is Q an alkene? Number one, it re reacts with bromine solution. Also, apart from this, if you go back to the other question there, If you also come back to B1 here, from B1, we can see that Q also reacts with um, permanganate. All right? So Q is an alkyne because it reacts with bromine and potassium permanganate. Okay? So now say sample Q. Sample Q is an alkene. Why is sample Q an alkene? Well, because, because it reacts with bromine, because it reacts with bromine and potassium. permanganate all right so we have this all right so one final one so if you've gotten um q r if, you, if you've gotten the value for s r q we are only left with p so we can hence say that sample p so far, so good. We've gotten the aromatic benzene. Uh, this should be aromatic. This should rather be aromatic, please. So, aromatic, not aroma. All right, aromatic, please. All right. <clears throat> so, for sample P, so we've gotten the aromatic, we've gotten alkyne, we've gotten alkene, we're left with alkene. So hence, sample P is an alkene. Alright, it's an alkene. Why is sample P an alkene? If you look at this, P did not react with any of them. Alright, so you can check, P did not react with any of them. And the, the homologous series that does not react with any of the above, that's potassium permanganate bromine or cuprous chloride is, is the alkene. So why is P an alkene? Simple, because, because it did not react, it did not react with, it did not react with, you can say any of the reagents, or let's just call them with bromine, it didn't react with bromine, comma, it didn't react with cuprous chloride, Or also did not react with potassium permanganate. All right, so potassium permanganate. All right, so this is how you get that done. All right, all right, so this is how you answer the full question. All right, so I hope you found this helpful. Please don't forget to like this video. All right, so like this video. Um, if it's your first time, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Okay, like the video. If it's your first time, please subscribe to the channel so you can get more contents like this. Also, share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. And then finally, don't forget to leave a comment. Say thank you if you if you like the video. Also, leave your observations. If you have any question, leave the question in the comment section. Thank you and see you in our next class.